Alright, uh, first video in the economics series. Do this in pieces, I guess, when I feel so inclined. In different environments, maybe. See how it goes. There's not too much to this argument. Two or three major points that sort of emphasize this fair economics idea. See, cat saying it's all horribly unfair. A big sham. Um, anyway, and so the first and obvious one is the whole uh, inheritance thing. I mean, I think even Adam Smith got this one, that you kind of break the fingers on the invisible hand um, if you allow empires to be formed and uh, have this legacy wealth thing dominate your economy. There's no, you just break the whole incentive carrot kind of game uh, because you just tie up all the incentive carrots in the hands of people who have no incentive. And it's really stupid. Um, so I've used metaphors for the cheat, and that's all it is, is a cheat. Uh, like having a, a public a race at the park, you know, three-legged race, and nobody would show up with their kids if they knew it was fixed. If they knew there's a, you know, the certain blue bloods were going to get a, uh, you know, their kids would be halfway down the track, and other kids would be three-quarters of the way down the track, and some kids would be already across the finish line and be given the prize and uh, they just would have no incentive to show up to the race. Uh, so it just, it just breaks the whole system. It just it takes all the, the incentive out of capitalism and just turns it into a racket run by the owners. Um, a legacy racket of uh, you know, people, a whole class of people who don't have to work, don't have to contribute. They're a complete drain on society. Um, and they take the biggest pieces of the pie. I mean, what sense does it make? What sense does it make to feed the biggest pieces of the pie to the most unproductive contributors? That's just plain stupid. Um, so yeah, that's a, it's fail all over the place. There's got to be limits on the amount of ownership that can be inherited. You got to earn it. Like a driver's license, like any other part, like any other um, piece of status or, or um, qualification. Uh, it's got to be earned. It can't be um, inherited. We don't allow anything else to be inherited. We don't give, we don't let kids inherit their father's PhD. We don't <laughs> let them inherit their driver's license or, um, you know, their skill at running a nuclear power plant or something like that. No, they have to earn it because it makes sense to have people earn it. Um, so yeah, legacy, wealth, inheritance, it's got to be uh, rationally regulated or the whole capitalism invisible hand thing just turns into rubbish until next time all right subject uh, related to um inheritance is bankruptcy um hey cat yes uh anyway <laughs> um yeah i mean you can this is the whole problem with inheritance basically is that yeah you can inherit the upside uh, unlimited, um, but no one inherits the downside. Uh, you don't inherit your father's a crook, a bum, um, squanders billions of dollars, creating huge liabilities, just says, I'm bankrupt, end of the liability. Yeah, well, that really corrupts the system, creates all kinds of negative incentives, so people engineer all kinds of stock schemes and other kinds of schemes because they won't pay for them and especially if they engineer them in such a way as nobody can unravel them until they're already in you know some island somewhere far away from liability or the money has been transferred to family members through trusts or some other nonsense and nobody's going to get the money back uh, so it's just one big giant huge fraud um, <clears throat> Yeah, so, yeah, corporate uh, bankruptcy especially, um, or just to uh, abolish this whole incorporation stuff, this idea that corporations are people, but they're not accountable people, and they're people with no children or no liabilities. Um, it's just a way of escaping uh, responsibility. So at minimum, uh, all bankruptcies should be paid out of a tax on inheritance. If you're gonna keep inheritance, then tax it at the rate of what bankruptcy costs the consumer. Because yeah, bankruptcies don't cost the guys who own the company, they don't cost the stockholders, you know, people who pay for the mess that an Enron creates are the consumers. They're the ones that pay for that waste. Um, and it's just a sham, it's just part of the inefficient, uh, unfair, 
Uh, stupid economics. So anyway, till the next segment. Ah, it is part three, our argument number three. Um, basically is the big one. Um, I'd like to hear a counter-argument. Um, look, we don't need this whole greedy capitalist system to have a really vibrant and efficient economy. Uh, we don't need the rich. It's, that's the simple argument here. The rich don't serve any function. They, they waste very expensive educations on golf courses. They um, waste resources building their own personal little pyramids all over the place. If you added up all their yachts and their Lamborghinis and all their other wasted stuff, the houses they own, all the other stuff, they just make our lives hugely expensive. Um, and they provide no value. They're just completely um, extravagant wasters of, of natural and human resources. They waste our labor, <coughs> um, you know, manicuring their their nonsense and dusting their bullshit, and uh, they're just of no value whatsoever. Instead of building Hoover dams, we're wasting human energy, um, you know, manicuring their lawns. Just, just grotesque, stupid, idiotic, moronic to keep this dead weight in the boat. Um, they're just no value, um, especially the legacy rich, the Rockenbergs and Bloombargies and blah 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 blahs and Rockefeller dabbers and all the rest of these jackasses. We don't need these fucking legacy owners. Um, we don't need owners, period. And so I, I argue that um, a business is a pretty simple thing. You put a guy in charge, he hires a bunch of manager guys, the manager guys hire the worker guys. That's the game. It's not much to it. And as long as you have accountability at all these levels and you don't have corruptions, uh, you don't have a problem. Uh, the reason why government businesses fail is because of government unions. So uh, as long as you create a system that doesn't allow the workers to vote on who their boss is or what their salary is going to be, um, you're going to be okay. Um, <clears throat> allow you know, person X to d decide what person Y is going to be paid and person Y decide what person X is going to be paid and you'll have enough distance uh, to create uh, a, an efficient system, a rational system. Uh, but anyway, the, the proposal is this simple. Um, the government ought to uh, create not-for-profit businesses, provide the seed money, the, the money to start the business. Um, they put a CEO in charge. We have an elected official who's in charge of the CEOs. Um, who decides which ones are successes and which ones are failures. Um, the business scheme is simple. You have the highest paid guy, the CEO, gets $250,000 a year, and the lowest paid guy gets forty grand a year for eight hours work a day, and that's it. Uh, you, you hire within those parameters, and you create a business <coughs> um, to be competitive. And, uh, yeah, I, I would argue that it's going to kick the butt of any um, stockholder held public company it's not going to have the waste it's not going to be paying <coughs> huge amounts of interest payments off to these these owners all these profiteers are no longer going to exist and so the business will be so much more efficient um, and basically the scheme would be that in, within 10 years the business pays the government back the seed money and then it just functions as a not-for-profit. It isn't owned by the employees, it isn't owned by the managers, it isn't owned by the CEO. But it exists as a non-profit entity, period. Um, and we, the people, decide who, through indirect, ind indirect representative election, who's going to run those companies. And if they run them to our satisfaction and not provide the customer service we expect, or we don't think they're doing a good enough job, then we hire new people to run it. Um, and we, the people, uh, can live in a civilization instead of living in this um, monarchy, instead of living in this world where we have all this nobility walking around thinking it's entitled and pointing at these people who never worked a day in their life, pointing their finger at other people, talking about bootstraps and all this other crapola. These people who've given huge head starts in the game, um, you know, puffing up their ego, thinking they're all so fucking brilliant. When, the, when if you gave that head start to 99% of the other people, they would have done more or better with the money. Um, it's just bullshit. Inheritance is garbage. It's a huge cheat in the game. And this whole idea that you can inherit ownership and control of something as vital and as important as the economy is just nonsense. It's, it's more obscene than letting people inherit a medical degree. You wouldn't do that, would you? Would you just let doctors give birth and say, hey, he's a doctor. He came out of me. Uh, he's earned it. Um, yeah, let him go cut you open. 
No, you wouldn't, because that'd be irrational. It's irrational to give a bunch of incompetent, selfish assholes control of our economy to decide what gets invested and what doesn't get invested in. Because we know these greedy, selfish bastards will keep investing in these schemes, and that's why the stock market's all a scheme. There's all these derivatives out there. There's all this crap paper out there all saying they own, they own, they own, they own. And uh, the liabilities are all yours, the workers. So, yeah, we should pay people to do work. All right, and let the workers decide what to do with the money. Um, that's simple. Uh, make everybody a worker. Give, give, give these rich people an incentive to go back to work, to use their Harvard education for something socially useful besides playing golf, uh, you know, on our backs. And that's what they're doing it on. You know, all this fancy lifestyle they're living is not free. You people got to get that. They're not creating jobs, okay? They're, they're eating your life. Okay, they're degrading the value of labor. They're forcing us to work twice or three times as long as we have to uh, for the lifestyle we get. Um, and it's that simple. They are building pyramids with your blood. And you've got to figure that out and let that go. We don't need owners. We don't need to pay interest. This is bullshit. Uh, we can find better ways uh, to live in a civilization. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Let's live in a civilization for a change. <clears throat> Instead of this barbaric, um, greed-focused, owner-focused, selfish bastard-focused um, crapulation, <laughs> um, uh, shittalization. That's what we're living in. We're living in a shittalization. Because you people simply can't just say, yeah, we don't need these assholes. We can do it. That's right. We can do an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. And we don't need these middlemen owners siphoning off 80% of the pie and stealing the value of our labor, stealing the value of our resources, stealing the value of the planet. Um, so, you know, they can out-compete each other to see who's got the, the longest yacht that no one's ever sailed on. Uh, it's just such crap. So, yeah, make a counter-argument to that. Thank you very much. That's the uh, opening video in the debate series. So we've got three challenges there. Inheritance, bankruptcy, and we don't need the owners. We really don't need them.